Hello Soul Riders, you're watching a top 10 startable video with Esme Silverforce. So, here we are. 2018 is coming to an end. This year has been filled with new content for Starstable, and looking back, this year has been intense. We've had some epic quests, loads of cool pets, so many gorgeous horses, convenient features dropping almost every month, and I even got like two seconds of fame in Starstable news. Oh, <laughs> to round off this lovely year and to show some appreciation to all the Starstable progress going on this year, it's time for me to bring you guys my top 10 Starstable updates throughout the year. To be able to do this list, I have compiled the updates overall, which means that even if I liked one thing very much in a particular update, it might not have made the list because of other added things in the same update. Also, please bear in mind that this video is based on my personal opinions, and it's very possible that you do not agree with some of my picks. If you do not agree with something in this video, make sure to leave a comment and tell me what updates would have made your top 10. Even if you don't agree with my opinions in this video, remember to be nice while you share yours. Also for this video, I'm gonna call each update on my list by the same names by which they were called in their English news post on starstable.com. And please be aware that there will be spoilers for endgame content in this video. Let's get started! Number 10. Happy Valentine's Day! So. Putting together the updates for this video, I realized that this list might seem really confusing to those of you who know me, because I am not a huge fan of events and holidays, and yet, quite a few of them got to take part in this list. And yes, the Valentine update wasn't anything really spectacular. This first week it was the same thing as ever, apart from this super pretty new clothing set. But the thing that pulls this update up to my top 10 is the purple pony. This Jorvik cosplay store opened up a brand new world to us with the most gorgeous interior in Jorvik, along with some really cool clothes and gear. While I'm not a big fan of Valentine's Day, I do love the purple pony and I have fond memories of this update because of it. Number 9. New horses and a new feature. This update brought three of the most gorgeous horses in the game, because let's be real, who doesn't love the Lucys? But also the NPC collection! As some of you might know, I am the founder of your Wikipedia, and I would have killed to get information like this handed to me back in the days when I still had the time to edit your Wikipedia articles for hours on end. The NPC collection is beautiful and gives a lot of life to some very familiar NPCs, and I am so happy to have it in the game. Number 8. Happy Midsummer. Yeah, as I mentioned on the first entry, I am not a fan of holidays and events, and yet here we are. I did not expect to love the Midsummer update as much as I did. I found the quests fun and interesting, and the new quest interface was very convenient while also cool looking. The midsummer tent where you could dream about a special someone was really cute, and I really enjoyed being able to talk to all the NPCs around the area. I did get really tired of the midsummer music after a while, but then again, it was a remix of a Swedish midsummer tune I don't really like to begin with, so I'm blaming that on Swedish traditions. Playing around on the stage was really fun though, it looked so cool. The fishing pond was a cute addition, since that's present on basically every midsummer fair in Sweden. But my favorite thing was no doubt crafting our own midsummer rats. Going around Jorvik looking for flowers was really fun, and to be able to collect so many was amazing! I really really hope we will be able to craft some rats for our horses next year. Number 7. New quests and a new feature. This update contained two things I'm really passionate about. Story quests and achievements. Obviously, this entry will contain spoilers for the main story quests. To start off with the achievements, I have to tell you I have been longing for them for years. I have always been at the end of the game since I began playing at such an early time, and I have always wanted something more to strive for. The achievements are adding a fun element to new players, and loads of more gameplay hours to those of us that have finished all other current game content. I am so glad they are here, and even though we already had another drop of even more achievements, I can't get enough of them. And as for the story quests, they brought us back to the circus, where we tried to free Concord from Idris. This was a continuation from the past week's quests, but getting into story quests are, according to me, always one of the best experiences in the game. In the trilogy of updates in which we finally freed Concord, this was the middle part. This time we finally got to see Concord for the very first time in Star Stable Online, before the entire thing wrapped up in the update the coming week. I am so very much looking forward to the promised continuation of this storyline in January of 2019. Number 6. The new starter horse. So. I have been playing Star Stable since October 4th, 2011. Yeah, I've been playing for a very long time. Therefore, I have a close bond to my horse Ash Dancer. Since the feature to buy horses wasn't implemented until April of 2013, 
Ash naturally is the horse I have spent the most time with and he is no doubt the favorite in my stable, no matter how many horses are joining the Silver Force family. To finally see my beloved Jorvik Warmblood fit in with all these new gorgeous horses was heartwarming. Even though this update only contained the starter horse update, which, mind you, even lets you change the color of your horse once for free if you wanted to, as well as removed some old props and told the dark horde dudes by the beach to hit the road, this was one of my top updates this year. Also, how gorgeous is this braided main style? Number 5. The Return of the Cloud Kingdom Jorvik truly is a place of magic and wonders, all year round. When Nick Stoneground's niece Mika showed up early this spring, she said she could show us the world and took us on a magic hot air balloon ride. The Cloud Kingdom did not really have much to offer back then, but upon its return in August of this year, my oh my, the area got vastly expanded and some really cool gameplay was added. The cool rainbow race was back, but now you could also collect some of Mika's missing items to get a cool reward. You could collect some golden horseshoes to get some XP for your horse, and you could also run around and enjoy the experience of exploring the Cloud Kingdom. You could now also buy Mika's cool explorer outfit, which in my opinion is one of the coolest sets this year. I had loads of fun during this update, and as you might recall, this was not all. Back at the South Hoof Peninsula, the entire farm had been remodeled. Why? I'll tell you more further down the list. Number 4. The new Silverglade If you guys have watched my Autumn Riders playthrough here on my channel, you already know I first got to experience Silverglade many years back in an entirely different game. Going into Silverglade in SSO, sure, the layout had changed, but the graphics were basically the same. Ten years later, seeing all the magic going on in Mistfall, I could not have been happier to finally see Silverglade get its well-deserved glow up. As you probably know if you watched Star Stable News this fall, this update has been planned for years, and as our lovely Ullis explained, this was such an important part in giving Star Stable its own unique art style. Not to mention, we already have been promised more. We do know that we want to do something special for Hollow Woods, we wanted to create an even more magical place than it is today, so we already started. And yeah, we got a mailbox too. Not that I care, because yay new Silverglade! Number 3. Find the Starbreeds of Jorvik. Yeah, spoiler alert again. So, this time Elizabeth told us all about Starbreeds. We got to meet Rhiannon, who's basically the cool mom of the druids, and we got to do some Mission Impossible style quest where we broke Justin out of Druid Prison, which is totally a thing. This was so much fun! I think this was the best story quest edition of this year. And we also got to meet Farah again, bringing us some cool horse gear. Oh yeah, we celebrated the Fortuna festival as well, as a continuation of the previous week. I don't remember much of it, but I do enjoy collecting rainbow gold, so I bet I had fun. Number 2. This is Halloween. Uh, yeah, so, uh, remember a couple of entries ago where I reminded you of how I do not like holidays and events? When I made my list of top updates, I at first was a bit surprised, but going through the content of this update, I realized there wasn't much not to like. So first off, Galloper Thompson was finally back, and we were encouraged to enter some freaky portal to walk straight into his lair. So at this gorgeous keep, we got to meet ghosts, talk to a cauldron, uh, yeah, I have no idea what a talking cauldron actually sounds like, participate in races, buy a horse, was that all? Okay, so the soul shards was a really cool addition this year. I really enjoyed talking to the ghosts of the keep to figure out where they had passed on, and to try to fit the pieces of information together to form some sort of timeline for the Galloper's past. The race where you ventured through Galloper's memories was really interesting and also quite fun, and I really enjoyed participating in the slightly updated Scarecrow Hill race. The new soundtrack to Galloper's keep was great and made the experience even better. While I'm not a huge fan of the Shire horses in the game, I did like the fact that we could buy Galloper's horse as a Jorvik Wild horse. And the outfit set we got from the event this year was really cool. I also really enjoyed the Halloween party at the Purple Pony, where we got to talk to some characters we don't otherwise meet very often. But the other thing that I really really liked about this update was the new horse sorting system. This is so easy to use and I love the fact that my horses stay in their stalls even if I mount another horse. This is what the feature should have been like from the start, and I was so happy to finally get it to the game. To make all of this even cooler, the same week a new Fjord horse dropped in the Star Stable Horses app. What a week! But I do say there's one update which was even better than this one. Before we talk about my top updates for the year, here's some honorable mentions of updates I really liked but didn't quite make the list. Number 
one, the South Hoof Rescue Ranch. I don't think I have heard anyone say they did not like this update. When the South Hoof farm was remade without any warning during the summer, the entire community was very confused and tried figuring out what was going on. When the Rescue Ranch finally opened, I think we all fell in love. Yu Shepard isn't the first character in the game to wear a prosthesis. I swear I haven't forgotten about you, Bob, but he was the first to truly enter our hearts. In this update, we got to help you restore the ranch to some very fun renovating, where we got to see the ranch come back to life step by step, and we also got to build a brand new home stable. When we were about to finish the renovations, the actual quests began when we met Baby Balder. Spending time with Balder and doing all the different activities with him blew me away and I had no idea what I was getting into when I started playing these quests. And that's coming from me who actually works with this product and I thought I knew what I was going to play. The soundtrack was insane, and I literally had tears in my eyes when Balder finally was reunited with his mother and their special soundtrack played. These quests were beautiful, the ranch is amazing, the new quest interface used only in these quests were really cool, Yu is a great character, and if I may wish for one thing in 2019, it's a continuation of these quests. Other than this, we also got some new walking dog pets in this very same update. I really love the walking pets and I always have one with me, so I was very happy to get even more. As if that wasn't enough, during this week a new Trakiner horse was added into the Star Stable Horses app, so there was even more foals to play with. This entire update was heartwarming, emotional and very beautiful. I could not have placed any other update as my favorite of 2018. Thank you so much for watching this video! If you liked it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Also make sure to check out my social media, which you will find the links to in the description box below. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel this year, and I hope to see you all next time!